Ben Scalata here. I'm doing a BE on a Mr. John Smith. So first thing we have to do is set up the room. Uh, we have our equipment here. We have a little clamp, uh, scissors, some tape in case we need it. Uh, some lubricant to lubricate the tip. Uh, a basin right here just in case if it leaks out when we uh, do the tipping or any time during the procedure. Uh, and then here's some towels just to make sure uh, if, to clean up if he does leak. And here's some gloves for me to make it uh, nice and uh, uh, procedure. And then right over here I have my IV pole which has my uh, barium enema uh, tip on it. And this is the package it comes in. I simply just take it out and put it on the IV pole. Here's the inflator cuff for the retention um, bubble right there, and then this is for the airs. The radiologist gives air when he's doing the fluoroscopy. So what's going to happen is I'm going to I'm going to bring the patient in here. I'm going to ask him history if he's he or she is pregnant, any um, any surgeries that were going on, if he or she is allergic to any medication. Uh, especially barium. Um, ask them if they had any prior barium enemas before. Uh, what's what they what brings them in for a BE uh, procedure. And then first, I'm going to get the patient in here, and we're going to do a scout AP KUB, and just to make sure that. The patient doesn't have any fecal matter in the abdomen, uh, in the small intestine or colon, just to make sure we know what the radiologist has to go off of for the next images. Um, okay, now I just have to get my patient. Okay, here is John Smith, my patient, and I already asked him all his history, if he's had surgery to the abdomen or colonoscopy, he said no, and then does he have any allergies, and he says no, no, no allergies and no allergies to barium. Uh, if he or she is pregnant, I already asked him that, if they're pregnant, he says no. And then, now what we're gonna do, I already have the, I, uh, the cassette in here, put it by 17, what we're gonna do is, sir, can you lie on your back right now? So, Mr. John Smith, how are you doing today? Okay. Okay, so, uh, did you follow your procedure, your cleaning edema, and uh, make sure that everything is, uh, uh, you didn't have anything to eat uh, after 12 in the morning, correct? correct. No, no breakfast, correct? Correct. Okay, so this is a um, abdomen, a KUB, this is the scalp, and I'm centering, centering at the iliac crest, all right, place for marker. 14 by 17, there you go, left side. Now, I'm going to go back here and set my technique. It would be about 80 at 40, and then, all right, go back here, beep. So I've just taken my stout. I'm gonna go ahead and run this and then have the doctor check it. Here is my AP. P K U B scout image of Mr. John Smith. Um, here we see the uh, he got all the anatomy required. Here's the left kidney, right kidney, and then let's see pubic symphysis, which means I got the uh, urinary bladder. Let's see, and then the psoas muscles. Okay, the doctor has looked at the scouts. I put on my gloves, and uh, he told me it was okay to tip the patient and get ready for the exam. So what we're going to do is have the patient get in the same position. So sir, can you move up onto your left hip, move up on the side of the hip. There we go, this leg in front, this leg back. So I expose him just enough for the tipping, not overexposing. So I have a tip right here, and I make sure that I have plenty of lube on it. And then the basin is right over here, just in case if I need it. It's right next to the patient. Right. So, uh, of course, 
be very gentle, insert it a little bit uh, anteriorly, and then curve, which is the route of the uh, rectum. All right, right here. So the tip is inserted. There we go. And now what I do is just one puff of the inflator cup. Okay, now it gets. My scissors, just in case. There you go. Just so the inflator cup doesn't come undone. And then a second one. Alright, that's where we need to have you on your back. So bring your this leg over to your right. So now at this point, the patient's ready for the floral procedure by the doctor. Okay, now the radiologist has finished his floral procedure, so what we're going to start with is an AP view. So now we're doing AP, KUV, same as before, but this time different technique. Center of the iliac crest, I have the tube and buggy aligned. There's the iliac crest, and I put my marker. And the technique would be you go up on the KVP, which would be about 110, and you lower the mass to about maybe 30, 30 mass. And I would make my exposure just like this. Here's my second KUB AP uh, of John Smith after I, I introduced the contrast medium as well as air. Um, and there's a little bit of distension here. Um, we got all the anatomy as well, the pubic symphysis up to the right here, the kidneys. It's hard. And then now I'm going to have him roll up onto his right side, which would be an RPO. There we go, about 30, not too much, about 30, just like that. And I would center, let's see, one inch, one to two inches lateral um, to the elevated side. There we go. That's a CR. And then I would shoot that. Beep. Here's the RPO position, AP projection of. John Smith, and what's in profile here is the left colic flexure as well as the descending colon. And the entire colon should be in, uh, demonstrated. And then get him up onto his left hip, onto the LPO. How are you doing, sir? Okay. LPO. There we go. And then centrum. There we go. Center it one to two inches to the uh, lateral to the elevated side from the mid sagittal. There we go. And the, t uh, the technique for both the LPO and the RPO would be roughly the same as the prior picture of the KUB. So it would be about one, 110 KVP at 30 max. All right. Here's the LPO position, AP oblique position. Uh, projection of Mr. John Smith's radiograph and what is in profile is the right collar flexure as well as the ascending colon and the entire colon should be in dem demonstrated but these two structures in particular are in profile the most because they're elongated. Okay so we did our LPO, RPO and then uh, AP so now what we have to do is get him into a left lateral of the cube so I have my IR right here. I'm going to turn backwards because it's a simulated grid. Here you go. All right. So, sir, can you get up on your left side? Yep. There you go. Perfect. All right. Same thing. It's going to be a level of the Iliac Crest with, uh, let's see, right there. The marker, outlet field, there you go. 14 by 17 cone down, there you go. And 
and my technique would be the same as the RPO and LPO about. It's uh, 110 at about 20 to 30 kdp. If I, I would take this ex uh, explosion right like this, and then I would ch uh, show the radiologist. Here's Mr. John Smith in the left lateral decubitus position for a PA colon. Um, projection. So what's demonstrated here is the entire colon, but what's in profile is the lateral side of the ascending colon and the medial side of the descending colon, the ones with the sides with airs, the areas of air. Alright, so I'm going to need you to get on your stomach. Can you get on your stomach for me? Alright. There you go. Now we're going to take a PA axial view. Detect the tube. There we go. Move the patient over. He is already over here. Right. Get the patient out. There we go. Align the button with two. Done with the cassette. Put it in there. All right. Put you guys everything. And place my marker. Let's see. As much as the amount out of the anatomy as possible. Okay. Now we're going to angle to Chicago. 30, 40 degrees, I'm going to put a 30 degree angle on it. And the level is it. As is. Okay, I'll shoot this 110 KB at uh, 20 to 30, uh, 30 knots. So. Here is my PA axial colon projection of Mr. John Smith in the prone position. What is demonstrated here is the sigmoid colon, the rectum, and the anus. Now what's really in profile here is the rectosigmoidal area right here. And the reason that why it's in profile so well is because it's perpendicular to the beam when it's in a 30 to 40 degree angle. It opens it up uh, even though it's not perpendic perpendicular to the IR. Our left lateral of the cube. Now we're going to do a right lateral of the cube. So what I'm going to have my patient do. Alright sir, you turn up onto your back and then now we're going to roll it up onto your right. There we go. Perfect. Right there. Is it going to happen? Okay. Make sure you bend your knees. Same as before, put the back side front. So it mimics a grid. Again, center of the iliac crest. Place the marker. Yep. Right there in the corner. Head crest. Call it 17 by 14. And then I would also give my patient a pump there. 110 at 30 again. Alright, sir, can you take a deep breath in? Let it out. Keep it out. That would be my exposure. Okay, breathe normal. Here's my AP colon projection of Mr. John Smith in the right lateral decubitus position. What's demonstrated here is the entire colon, but what's in profile is the lateral surface of the descending colon and the medial surface of the ascending colon, and that's the areas of air. Can you go and lie on your back again, sir? There we go. Get on your left side. There we go. So right now I have the, the bag uh, that's empty, and now I, I lower it so it empties from his bowels into, back into the bag. Good job, are you okay? So I take off the clip from 
big uh, the inflating cuff to take it off. Now the retention cuff starts to deflate, so there's no pressure in his anus. So I let that sit for a couple uh, um, a couple minutes. Deep slow breaths. All right. I slowly do that, and then I get the barium bag and all of its contents and place it in the trash. So I wipe up any mess, you know, around the foot box or on the table. And then here's the basin if he needs it. Um. Alright, so you can get up on your back. If you need to clean yourself, here's this. Uh, while my patient is in the bathroom, avoiding his bowels and barium, I'm going to be sitting up for my lateral rectum post evac shot. Again, since we don't have grid, turn backwards. Center it. Okay. Mr. Smith, are you ready for your last picture? I need you to get up on the table, up onto your stomach. Right here? Yep. Get up on your stomach. Mm -hmm. Nice and slow. There you go. Yeah. And center it as is. Alright, lift the combinations a little bit. Go on the marker. And my technique would be about one one oh five at at forty. Me? This is my right lateral ventral decubitus rectum of Mr. John Smith in the prone position, and this is my evac um, image. Uh, so what we have demonstrated here is this, uh, the sacrum and the coccyx, and then uh, as well as this, what's really dem uh, was really in profile is the sigmoid colon, and then the uh, rectum. So the sigmoidal rectum. And then here's the anus. Of course, we've taken out the the tube. Okay. Now I'm gonna get my patient ready. Get this X-ray tube out of the way. Of course, I would check it with the doctor and uh, with all my X-rays. And all right, so you get up on your uh, back. Get up on your back. Okay. Now you get up. All right. We're all done with the procedure, sir. Discard my gloves. Right, I'm going to go ahead and get you in the bathroom right here and you can get changed. There you go, get changed. Go. All right, Mr. Smith, uh, we're all done with the procedure. Uh, your stool might be white for a couple days. Make sure you drink plenty of water so it dilutes the barium. Um, it might be clumpy, it might be a little bit watery, but don't worry, that's normal. Um, if uh, you have any itching, any hives, any redness, uh, contact your department. If you have any